Throughout the Gospels, Jesus demonstrates the five leading causes of life that we have been exploring the last few weeks. We started with connection, generativity and blessing, coherence, agency that we're focusing on today, and next week will be hope. Nearing the end of his life, Jesus offers what scholars call his farewell discourse. He teaches and empowers his disciples, offering words of encouragement. He tells them that he must lead them and adds that those who believe in him, those who have witnessed what he has done, will not only do what he has done, but they will do even greater works. How can that be possible? They won't walk on water or calm storms. They won't restore sight to a man born blind. We haven't heard that they were able to turn water into wine or do many of the other miracles that Jesus performed. And yet the earthly ministry of Jesus was limited to a particular time in history and to a particular geographical space. His public ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing was about three years. His ministry was also limited in geographic scope. His mission could have died when he was crucified, but it didn't. Why is that? I believe that one of the reasons is that Jesus empowered his disciples and he blessed them with a sense of agency and coher coherence that we talked about last week, that sense of meaning and purpose in life. This is echoed in the scripture, Luke 9, that Ben read. Jesus gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The other thing that Jesus did before he died was to give them a sense of deep connection with the spirit. And connection is another one of the five leading causes of life, according to Gunderson and Prey. Jesus invites his followers to no longer be servants. He invites them to be friends, friends of his heart, who can understand that they must carry on his actions in the world after his death and resurrection. They are to become agents of change and possibility. And that is what happens eventually. Filled with the Holy Spirit, the disciples fearlessly preached the gospel. They found that they were able to perform miracle, mir miracles and miraculous healings in Jesus' name. They followed his example of teaching and healing, emanating love and compassion. They were empowered by the Spirit to say and do things they never could have imagined. They expressed agency. We understand agency as the human capacity to choose, to do, to affect change, to move towards life. In their book, Leading Causes of Life, Gunderson and Prey write, humans do. We go here or there, now or later, fast or slow. We lift, reach, touch, hold, dig, study, watch, fight, love, seek, build, invent, and make things. We do, and thus we live. Sometimes all we have is this doing. Sometimes doing may be enough to keep us alive until the other leading causes of life rise into the space created by our doing. Doing is a kind of thinking, for it embeds and expresses choice among options. Agency has the ability to transcend more activity. Agency is an action, but it is also a gift when aligned with purpose or call. Listen to one of the powerful stories of agency they tell in the book that they wrote in 2009, 11 years ago. When the civil rights movement hung by a slender thread 
Its young leaders were baffled by storms of violence and political cynicism beyond what they had anticipated in their darkest imaginations. They argued strategy, whether to go back to violent streets, into the courts, back to churches, around the schools, or withdraw until they figured it out. John Lewis, who was 23 years old at the time, said, I'm marching. Again, that night, they debated, wearing themselves out in analysis. The next morning, what did John Lewis do? He got up and marched. So did hundreds of others. It was all they could do at that moment, and so they did. John Lewis was an agent in his own life. He expressed agency. He moved, he chose, he acted. The expression of agency created hope when there was none to be found. And listen to this, they wrote, Gunderson and Prey wrote, it will be remembered long after Lewis lays his body down. It connected people who had been shattered. It created the possibility of coherence when there was little left. Reading this story 10 years after the book was published and hearing this story now, in the year of civil rights icon representative John Lewis's death, we can attest to the fact that his expression of agency is definitely remembered. There are times in our lives when we too might feel defeated or events occur where we experience a loss of agency, where choices are taken away from us. We are experiencing that this year definitely with the pandemic. And especially now as cases are rising everywhere throughout the land. And I understand at 11 o'clock this morning, Governor Inslee is about to announce additional measures and new restrictions to combat the virus here in Washington state. Our sense of agency may feel diminished, but we also understand that we have choices to make as well. We can experience a loss of agency when we experience any transition or trauma or illness or loss, when the ground shifts underneath our feet. Our sense of agency is often taken away from us as we age, when we can no longer do the things we used to do with ease things we used to take for granted. In those moments, what is important to remember is that we have the capacity, we can tap into the capacity to do something, to make choices for ourselves, to choose life. In the great scheme of things, I want to offer a small story one where I can testify to the power of agency of moving toward life in the midst of feeling distressed and overwhelmed. Two months ago, do you remember the afternoon when we received the news that Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg had died? We knew it was coming but she had conquered again and again and again, and this was reality. I was devastated about the loss of this powerful woman who had dedicated her life to advancing justice and equality under the law. While Ruth Bader Ginsburg expressed agency every day of her life in the midst of battling cancer, no less, I was momentarily paralyzed by thoughts of what her death would do to the balance of the Supreme Court, not to mention the deep loss of such a powerful voice of justice and integrity. I imagine I was not alone in those feelings on that stormy evening of September 18th as the rain came down with distant 
thunder clouds coming closer with flashes of lightning in the sky. It may not have been the most prudent decision on my part to get in the car in the rain with thunder and lightning and head to the church. But I realized there was one thing I could do besides just sitting on the, the couch feeling devastated and being par par paralyzed. I could change the reader board to honor her life with one of her quotes. And I'm going to attempt to share my screen here. Are you seeing the reader board? Can I have somebody nod yes? yes? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Fight for the things that you care about, but do it in a way that will lead others to join you. And I couldn't get the exact quote on our reader board because of the limitations of space. But this was uh, my translation of what would fit. And this quote is actually a quote about using our agency, our voice. There may be times in our lives where we may feel disconnected, where life may be incoherent, and yet God has infused in us the capability to choose life even when there is so much in our lives that can threaten to overwhelm us, even when the odds are stacked against us. The quality of agency reminds us of the fundamental human capacity to seek and discover life, to choose positivity, to choose to move toward life even in the midst, in the midst of, in the face of death. Agency is about doing, even if it is just doing only what we can do in this moment, which doesn't feel like much sometimes. But doing will keep us going until the other leading of causes, other leading causes of life bubble up in our lives. Gun Gunderson writes, I learned the language of agency when I was in South Africa in the radical disconnection of apartheid, in the midst of catastrophe, of the HIV AIDS crisis, and the incoherence of apartheid using religion against people. Even in that setting, people made choices to move, to do. They worked, healed, resisted, all expressions of agency. Life is a journey of struggles. Just like the virus, it does not discriminate. And Angie reminded me of the scripture, Matthew 5, 45, where it rains on the just and the unjust alike. We may be involved in situations where we don't believe we have the power to overcome. We may face challenges that make us feel as if life no longer makes sense, or we've lost our sense of meaning and coherent in life. So I'm going to go back to the song that Stuart sang, and he got a friend of his to play drums along with him with just the accompaniment, so that was fun. Um, my life is in you, Lord. Did you notice the beautiful flower growing out of a crack in what looks to be desolate earth or a sidewalk? Have you ever noticed trees still growing when they are stuck literally between a rock and a hard place. And I'm going to try to share my screen again. In the natural world, in God's creation, there is evidence of life persisting in harsh environments, finding ways to adapt to their situation. It's inspiring to believe that there's always a way around whatever challenge you face in life. That trees will grow on a rock or literally out of a rock. When a tree outgrows the nutrients a rock can supply, it might break through the rock and reach with its roots for the soil beneath the rock. Persistence and determination expressed in agency can pay off. Literally growing where you are planted, choosing life. The predicament of this tree is 
unbearable. It's growing between a crack in the rock with little supply of water and little to no soil to feed it with, its, with nutrients. But regardless, the tree still finds energy to keep growing. I was chatting with Nira because she's a, a biologist. She's a professor of biology at Pacific Lutheran University. And um, she said, because plants can't move, they have to grow where they're planted. They have to be incredibly adaptable to whatever environment they find themselves in. And I thought, oh, that'll preach. That's what we're talking about. We might be in an inhospitable environment, and yet, if we are adaptable and claim our sense of agency that God has imbued in us, we can adapt. Agency is exercising one's personal power to do or to act. Agency creates more agency that generates the space for the other causes of life along the way. All of the leading causes of life generate the others, connection, coherence, blessing, hope. Agency is a generative force that inevitably leads to, the, to our sense of call, giving traction to three questions. What am I to do with my life, my one precious life? What have I been called to do? And am I doing it? When any of us perform an act of kindness for another person, and some of you may know that earlier this week was National Kindness Day. When we perform an act of kindness, when we offer hospitality to a stranger, when we work for justice and reform in our society, we are exercising agency and extending the works of Jesus. We are going to places and doing things he could not do while he walked on this earth. We've prayed our unison prayer several times in worship since the pandemic began. And it is a prayer of agency. As we ask God to stir up in us a desire to serve, to be God's partners in working for good in the world. And we do so by living out the words expressed in the hymn written by Marty Haugen. Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Built of hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome. All are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Let us sing with AJ.